Is freedom of choice just an illusion? Or do we have free will? Libertarianism is widely rejected today by most philosophers as untenable. It is the view that human free will and determinism are incompatible, that human beings have free will, and so determinism is false. Libertarianism concerning human freedom comes in two main types, event-causal libertarianism and agent-causal libertarianism. Event-causal libertarians exhibit one major metaphysical feature that I'll be focusing on, while agent-causal libertarianism exhibits two major features, one of which is shared with event-causal libertarianism. I'll explain what these features are as I look at each type. However, a significant problem with each type is that they're unintelligible. One of the types of libertarianism is even more unintelligible than the other, as I'll show. The unintelligibility can be best seen initially against the backdrop of the Principle of Sufficient Reason, or PSR, which states that every fact has an explanation, or that there are no brute or inexplicable facts. To begin, then, let's look at the event-causal type of libertarianism first. The major feature of event-causal libertarianism that I'll focus on is its affirmation of the principle of alternative possibilities. The main idea is that when an agent freely chooses to act, the choice is up to the agent, and so the agent could have freely chosen otherwise than they in fact did. More specifically, the principle of alternative possibilities is manifest when the event causal libertarian says that an agent who freely chooses A at some time T could just as well have freely chosen B at time T instead. If, for instance, we rewound time and played out the same preceding events that led up to the choice at time t. The problem, however, is that this is unintelligible, problems aside about whether the agent can even be responsible for her choices. It's unintelligible because it's inexplicable why the agent chose A at time t rather than B at time t. That is, there's no reason for A's being chosen instead of B at time t. The postulate of multiple open possibilities in which choice A is actualized by the agent is unintelligible because there's no reason whatsoever why choice A is the case over choice B. That the agent chose A rather than B is a fact that is inexplicable. Thus, on event causal libertarianism, the agent's choice of A and not B is a brute fact. And we know that the PSR states that there are no brute facts. The PSR states that everything is intelligible and has an explanation. Hence, event causal libertarianism is unintelligible. Agent causal libertarianism is even more unintelligible than event causal libertarianism. This is because, firstly, the agent causal type shares the major feature of affirming the principle of alternative possibilities, just as the event causal type does, which we saw was unintelligible. But secondly, there's a further additional condition on freedom that is unintelligible regarding agent causal libertarianism. So we might even say that agent causal libertarianism is doubly unintelligible, as we'll see. This further additional condition is this. Agent causal libertarianism affirms that a free agent is the ultimate source and cause of their choices and actions, that the agent is the terminus of the causal chain of all their free choices and actions, and one begins a new causal chain when one freely acts. As such, an agent can exert an agent causal power to freely choose and act, and the agent's exertion of agent causal power is intrinsically such that nothing is an efficient cause of it. The free agent, in other words, is quite literally an uncaused cause or unmoved mover of their free choices and actions. Put again, this is unintelligible, and even more so than the principle of alternative possibilities which is shared by both event-causal and agent-causal libertarianism. To see why this further condition of agent-causal libertarianism is unintelligible, which causes that an agent is an uncaused cause, it should first be noted that the free agent is a contingent being, and that every relevant fact about the agent is contingent. And contingent facts, by PSR, are intrinsically such that they must be explained by external causes, 
otherwise such facts would be inexplicable for Groot. Yet the Agent Causal Libertarian posits facts about Agent Causal powers of agents that are strictly uncaused, as I've just outlined. But that implies that contingent facts about a free agent are both externally caused, as by PSR, and uncaused, as by Agent Causal Libertarianism. That shows Agent Causal Libertarianism not only is unintelligible, but is absurd. What's more, since Agent Causal Libertarianism also affirms the principle of alternative possibilities shared with Event Causal Libertarians, the unintelligibility in Agent Causal Libertarianism is layered on even further. Nonetheless, perhaps one is a Libertarian and denies the PSR. Fair enough, but it's important to note that this doesn't help one all that much. A denial of PSR doesn't make Libertarianism any less unintelligible. All that denying PSR would do is show that one thinks an unintelligible position can be true. And that is still a pretty damning cost of the libertarian position, whether the PSR applies or not. I also wouldn't suggest going down the road of PSR denial, since, as I've explained in another video, denying or failing to affirm PSR seems to render one's position incoherent in general. In any case, there are also weaker principles than PSR that show agent causal libertarianism to be unintelligible and absurd. There's the popular principle of causality, one even used in the Kalam cosmological argument, which says that whatever begins to exist has an external cause. That is to say, for any X, if X begins to exist, then X has an external cause. And this principle of causality is in turn based on the weaker and even more plausible principle that from nothing, nothing comes. It's based on the first principle of causality because whatever begins to exist without a cause comes into being from nothing. Now, recall that agent causal libertarianism affirms that one's exertion of agent causal power to freely choose or act is ultimately uncaused. And note here the rather undeniable fact that one's exertion of agent causal power is something that comes into being at some time t. That is, it's rather undeniable that one's uncaused exertion of agent causal power begins to exist. And that implies, by the principle of causality, which says that whatever begins to exist has an external cause, that one's uncaused exertion of agent causal power is in fact externally caused. Thus, the agent causal libertarian view incurs the unintelligible and absurd conclusion that one's exertion of agent causal power is both caused and uncaused. In conclusion, while it should be sufficiently clear now that the tenability of libertarianism doesn't look good, I do not think less of any libertarian friends. I also say that because I am an incompatibilist about free will, though not one that believes in the success of libertarianism. I think that agent causal libertarians are especially correct to the extent that they affirm that freedom requires not only the ability to choose otherwise, but also that an agent must be an unconscious cause of their choices and actions. Unfortunately, where I depart with such libertarian friends is that I cannot bring myself to believe that such a thing could possibly be true, with the cost being a denial of both PSR and the aforementioned causal principles.